Oh, it's going live on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. So way more people can join us. Oh, that's how it works, huh? <laughs> All right. We'll get started. All right, Buju. Hello, everybody. I'm Tina McDonald of the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe and the communication specialist at the American Indian Cancer Foundation. Thank you for joining us for part one of our World Food Day event. During this session, we're joined by Chef Crystal Wapepa of the Kikiku Tribe of Oklahoma. Crystal is the first Indigenous chef to be featured on Food Network's Chopped. She grew up in Oakland, California, developing her culinary skills at a very young age, along with the knowledge that food and cooking brings people together. She worked in the kitchen with her grandmother and aunties, who taught her about traditional food and the importance of passing the knowledge on to her children and Native communities. Today, Crystal proudly serves Native cuisine to the urban Indian community. She continues to be an integral part of the Indigenous food sovereignty movement, sharing the beauty and power of Indigenous foods to relatives across the nation. Um, I'll plug her website into the comments so you can check out her page and support her work. Uh, it's wapapaskitchen.com. I'll put that in the comment section in just a bit here. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Crystal. Thank you for being here with us today, Crystal. What are you going to make for us today? Hi, I'm going to make a butternut squash sweet potato soup with a, actually a toasted sage. Something very easy that people at home can access and they can, they can do. And so actually the first thing I'm gonna say is welcome to my home and thank you for welcoming me into your home. <laughs> my name is Chef Krista Wapipa. I'm Kickapoo and I'm Satin Fox, I'm a tribe from Oklahoma. I was born and raised here in Oakland, California and I'm very excited for World's Food Day. And I just wanna mention that um, what I'm preparing today is something very easy and something very accessible for everyone at home to make. And so um, this is probably one of, one of my personal favorites because I love butternut squash. <clears throat> and so um, the reason why I love butternut squash is because one, you can do so many beautiful things with it. And then also um, when it's a soup, it's so comforting, especially we're in October right now. And so we're kind of, you know, transitioning to that, that winter weather. Some people have snow right now. And so I just want to um, do something very simple, something very indigenous something very just to offer people into their homes because sometimes a lot of people don't you see the butternut squash if you're at a farmer's market or if you're growing it or if you see it at a store you see it but i know a lot of people pass it you know why i think a lot of people pass it is because the texture and how hard it is but actually it's a wonderful harvest Food. You can store it in your cupboards and it will stay up to at least six months. If you put it in the dry where you put your potatoes and everything, it can store for a long time. And this is something us as indigenous people, we like to harvest and we harvest because of the winter time and things we can utilize in our kitchen. So I just want to say welcome to my kitchen and thank you for welcoming yours. So I'm going to start this off. I'm going to start off what I did is I'm going to do a little chef talk here. I just kind of mise en place um, what I'm making today. So I'm going to try to make it really easy so everybody at home can follow. But you're more than welcome. Um, maybe later after I can give the recipe just in case or if this is going to be recorded. You can always rewind me. <laughs> <clears throat> And so as for me, just being an indigenous chef, um, I've learned a lot along the way of one, I just want to um, express um, that our foods um, are literally being revived. We always had our foods here. It just so happens not to be so much displayed in the stores and uh, you know everywhere we go, but actually in my home, how I grew up with my grandmother, my grandfather, my grandfather, what one thing I love about him, he was a hunter and he, was a gardener and so I learned a lot just from watching him bring things home and my grandmother was always in the kitchen she loved to cook and so one of the things that I do like I'm I am gonna admit is I like the texture of a butternut squash 
because it is just how the skin is and how it keeps and it has the little babies in the middle <laughs> and that's the seeds. And I know this butternut squash has beautiful stories. And um, so what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm going to turn on my stove maybe to a medium. And then I'm gonna start off, like again, I mentioned before, we are gonna make um, butternut squash soup it's going to be with sweet potato and it's also going to be with an apple and i know people are at home saying an apple yeah we're looking for that creamy texture and what i'm going to do is make a fresh vegetable stock okay so easy vegetable stock is of course i have the carrot right here and i like making my own fresh stock um, when i am doing a soup um i don't really like the, all the other 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 things that people add, like sometimes I'll add a little um, bouillon or beef bouillon. It's always good just to make your own. And um, actually, I was just talking with a dear good friend of mine. Um, he was doing a bone marrow um, stock, and so he goes, "There's a lot of fat with this bone marrow. What am I going to do?" And I'm like, "Oh my goodness! You can just store it. You can either put it in your." refrigerator or you can put it in your freezer me personally i would put it in my freezer and then kind of you break it down and use it as i go but this one right here is definitely going to be a vegetable stock so we're going to start this off okay so i got a little oil just not a lot just a little oil and um <clears throat> put it inside the pan and then from there i just cut up a carrot it doesn't have to be like finely diced or all fancy. And we're, what we're going we're going for is actually the flavor. So if you can kind of see the carrot right here, um, the, the wonderful world of um, Zoom. <laughs> and so actually I put it into the pan. Then at the same time, what I've done is I have a celery. So what I'm doing is cutting the celery, but um, there's times where you have these little long strings on the celery. And if you're, um, you know, it's known that um, they're not really good for if you're a diabetic, um, the, the strings on here, um, it's not really good for to digest. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna clean this very good so it can digest, okay? And so I'm just gonna give you just a little background where I, how one, how I became a chef and the other, what, what made me change my culinary into all of indigenous foods, which I love because one of the stories, the other reminds me of my, my family, how I grew up. I very, I grew up um, very fortunate um, around a lot of berries, around a lot of wild rice, squash, you know, corn. And to me, these Foods are the most beautiful foods. Um, they're colorful. And there's a saying, like, um, I love colors. So if you ever if you ever had my food and you're wondering why it's always um, colorful with berries and stuff, I just love the color and the vibrance and what it says on there. And so what I got is basically I have the carrots sauteing, and then I'm cutting up my celery. And you don't have to make it all fine. Um, you know, all fancy cutting. I'm just cutting it up because what we're shooting for, we're shooting for the flavor, okay? And so with that, I am going to cut up an onion. I'm gonna take the skin off right here. And so you have your basic vegetable stock, which is gonna be an onion and a carrot and a salad. And then I'm just gonna add, not a lot, just maybe I'm gonna say, um, uh, teaspoon of salt that's going to go in there and I like to do sea salt if you guys can and so as I'm sauteing these and getting that ready and then I'm going to push all this to the side and then so we have the butternut squash okay so we have this beautiful butternut squash I already pre-cutted it because we are on a time limit <laughs> and so but it was very easy to cut and I just wanted to show you just in case people at home don't know how to cut a butternut squash and that's the reason why they pass it up and they don't really cook with it um, but they love the taste of it you know and so so what I've done is I just have this whole butternut squash right here and I just got my knife and I just cut 
cut it off um, to the side. So then we have we have this flat side right here, and then we also have the other, which I like using this at the later in the day. I'm gonna use the rest of this, but right now let's just use this, okay? And then so I cut down, and then if you're an elder, I would have someone else cut in, or if not, you're more than welcome to stick it in the oven. It can get a little soft and just add a little shallow water for it to be soft. <clears throat> and so at the same time as I'm cutting, I'm just gonna kind of clean it off. And then it's starting to smell really good in here. Um, I love a vegetable stock. People can put, you can put basically anything in your stock you want. I like to try to keep this recipe really simple. So at the same time as I'm cutting, I'm just gonna push all this over here to the side. And then I'm gonna make We'll say three. I'm gonna start off with three and then I'm gonna put this on the side. So what I did with the butternut squash, or even if you want to do a pre <clears throat> um cut it up like a day before, that would be good. And so what I did, you see, I have three of the butternut squashes right here. Okay. So I'm gonna put them on set them on a pan right here. And then all at the same time, I've done the same thing with an apple, just a half an apple, actually. And then I have my, you can call this, call it sweet potato. What's the difference? You have a sweet potato that looks more like a potato. Then you have a yam. So today we're going to call this a sweet potato, okay? And then our, you can call it a yam, whatever you want to call it. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to clean this off. So what I'm doing is cleaning, actually I'm cleaning this skin off. Um, then at the same time, um, then the same thing to the apple. So I did three rings in here. Put this over here to the side. And then we still have our veggie stock going. And then I have exactly, I was going to show you, exactly one cup of water right here. I'm going to... Um, Put it into a soft pan and let that simmer. Here, I'm gonna wait for it to come to a boil, and I'm gonna, as we go, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. See how I'm saute, sauteing this, and what I'm doing is wait for it to get a little soft, and it smells so so good. So as my water's coming to a boil, at the same time, what I done is I got the sweet potato yam and I got the butternut squash. Then I'm gonna have an apple. So all at the same time, I have all this going. <clears throat> and then this recipe is so simple at home. It is very, very simple. And so, we're doing this for, we're going to say a good five minutes as I'm browning this up and then make it a little wilty. So when I go ahead and put it into the one cup of water, <clears throat> it's going to add some awesome flavors. And so at the same time, I have some culinary sage. See this? It's the culinary sage. Okay. And with this, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it onto this pan. Okay, so we have the culinary sage, right? I probably got a, about a good six leaves on here, as you can see. And then we have an apple, see, an apple with the skin on, apple. And then we also have the yam, sweet potato. And then we have one of my favorites, of course, is the butternut squash. And so all of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roast it. We're going to roast it for a good 15, 20 minutes. It all kind of depends. Like right here, I have an electric stove. So 20 minutes. If you have a gas, yay. If you have a, if you have a gas, um, go ahead and do 15 minutes. And what we're going to do this on is 375. Okay. So it's a really simple recipe. This one right here, it's going to feed at least two people. Um, but if you really love it, just go ahead and double this recipe, okay? Or even triple if you want to. So 
as I have this, I'm going to put it into the oven. And at the same time, I have my vegetable stock going. And so the wonderful thing of that is because we're on Zoom. So we have it roasted. So we have an apple. We have um, a toast. We're going to say toasted because you're going to roast it with the culinary sage, a little toasted sage, sweet potato, and the squash. Okay. So all at the same time. Now my vegetable is all nice and brown and nice and not so wilty, wilty, but good enough where it talks to each other with all the flavors, okay? So remember, we have the carrots, we have the celery, and we have the onion in it, okay? So I'm sticking this into a little saucepan and I'm waiting for it to come to a nice good boil with all this beautiful broth, which I love. And then at the same time as I'm waiting for this to come to a really good, nice, good simmer, I'm coming over here. <clears throat> I'm kind of pushing everything over here to the side away. And then I have a blender, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is get all these wonderful smelling, veggies and we're going to blend it all together okay so as i'm getting ready to do that i just wanted to say um <clears throat> for um world food day um i think this is pretty awesome and that we all of us together we can celebrate indigenous food um we need indigenous food day for world food day right <laughs> um <clears throat> I think this is awesome what um, the Native American Cancer Foundation, what they're doing is um, having uh, me and Elena come into your homes and um, just kind of giving you guys um, a recipe or even little symptoms of knowledge of Native foods for non-Natives if they don't know what native foods are. It's definitely squash. It's definitely the potato I have right here. And I have a culinary sage and I have the onions and the carrots. And um, it's smelling really, really good in here. And um, and just as for people um, <clears throat> that really don't really know too much about indigenous foods, um, our foods are one of the first foods, um, I think, there, it's so beautiful healing. Um, our foods come from here. And so as we consume it, it's good for our emotions, our mental. If we're going through certain things, it's always good to connect with your people's foods or it's always to connect with foods that brings up really good memories. Like I can remember having a corn soup, for instance, and just closing my eyes with the venison corn soup. And I can just, it'll take me back to a place um, where I always talk about my grandmother. It'll take me back there to her home as she always made sweet dried corn soup or she made hominy soup and just different things like that. So it's always good, especially we're in a pandemic time. It's always good to have that connection and food is that connection. Food is the healing of the right foods, of course. And the connection is it, it, it's good medicine for our minds, our body and our spirit. And even we're going through this, um, pandemic time with the COVID and it's kind of um, a way of us connecting with the higher power or ever how you believe. It's um, time for us just to connect with our foods. How are these foods good medicine? For one, it comes from this earth. Two, um, how it's prepared, it's always important. And what it's used for, just for instance, I'm doing this butternut squash and all these things that I have in here is a good fiber. You know, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good filler. Like, you know, um, good, it depends if you like butternut squash. <laughs> I love butternut squash. <laughs> I love all kind of squash, of course, you know, but I just want um, just to connect with you guys on that note um, as me being a chef and um, of me um, seeing my family struggle with diabetes, seeing my family pass away from cancer. And um, I'm gonna say like, um, it really woke me up to um, a lot of 
the reality of our historical trauma of what's going on in Native country today. And so I feel as me as being an Indigenous chef, we have that job and that job is to actually educate ourselves and, and get a lot of knowledge and especially with our tribal foods and what the health benefits are. And um, that's the responsibility and that we have and I feel that um, every chef should have of what are we preparing as medicine for our families our friends you know we always can prepare food just like how I am right now um, but in a good way I don't always have to talk to everybody I can just prepare it from a good heart you know and transfer the energy basically that's what I'm really trying to say and so <clears throat> Anyway, so now my stock, which I really love, my veggie stock. Look at it. If you can see it, see my veggie stock. My veggie stock is uh, smelling so good. And so you guys know what I'm going to have for lunch. <laughs> but you're going to have it with me, of course, right? <laughs> and so what I'm doing is I got my blender. And I'm going to start cutting up the things that I have roasted, the butternut squash. I'm just going to kind of you don't have to cut them up all fancy dancy, but you just want to cut them up in a good way. See? And so I'm going to put that into my blender. And it's always good. People ask, why are you roasting it? Um, I, me personally, just boiling it to me, it just kind of takes all the flavors out. Me personally, I like to roast. Um, if it was up to me, I'll roast it in a fire stove. <laughs> but, um, you know, but um, at the same time, um, it's really, it adds really good flavor. Do I add flavor on top? You could if you want to, but to me, it takes away from the whole purpose of being roasted because you want it to cook in its own sweetness and own juice. So I added the three butternut squashes and two here. And then I, what I got is a sweet potato and I'm dicing them up just as I did the butternut squash. And then you're gonna ask, why are you doing an apple? <laughs> well, I feel that um, it needs something else, of course. And to me, with the sweet potato and the butternut squash, it already has its own flavor already. Me personally, I wanted to put an apple in there just because of the taste and the texture that we're going for. And so, um, so I'm cutting it up just as I did the sweet potato, as I did the um, butternut squash. And then I have it all in my mixer. See, there we go. All that prettiness. See all that pretty color? So all at the same time as I have my stock going, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the broth. <laughs> this and so actually I have a little colander right there I'm going to add so we have this beautiful broth and remember this was with a cup of water and then all together we have one stem of a carrot same thing with the celery and then we're going to say um, one third of an onion okay <clears throat> and then what I'm doing is I'm adding the one cup of vegetable stock into my butternut squash all at the same time put this over here i have i'm going to get a little close in here see i have this culinary sage you see it um i just kind of toasted it where it has a little crunchiness and a little crisp to it because there's if you um like i like doing just a little small bits of pieces because it's really overpowering and it can really take over the whole flavor that you're really shooting for so this one right here i have what do i got here one two three four actually i have four so four leaves okay um if just in case you guys at home you want to do this recipe and you're wondering what did she do uh, you don't i don't want you guys to overpower it with the sage this is only with four leaves okay so as i come over here and and you, as i toasted it you can feel the little crunchiness of of the sage and so what i'm doing is i am going to go ahead dice this up 
or if you have, a, um, actually, if you have a chopper, that would be great, but this, let's do it by hand, okay? Let's keep it old here. <laughs> um, so, all together, if I had to measure it all, um, just as for the culinary sage, I'm going to say um, a half a tablespoon, okay? Well, actually, yeah, about a half a tablespoon, but with four leaves, like I said. So, I'm adding this in there. You see all that prettiness and that juiciness that's in there. And then, so this is what I, I've done um, before many times. Um, sometimes, yes, we have this beautiful vegetable stock. You can make it either or, but I'm going to add some coconut milk. Now, you, you at home are probably saying, how does the coconut milk and the squash and the apple, and especially the culinary sage come together? Actually, it comes together beautifully, but you got to watch that sage. How are you going to cook with it? Because it depends. You can add less. But if I would keep it totally under the four leaves because it can be very, very overpowering. And then as for this coconut milk, you can pretty much get at the stores. This is our organic coconut milk. Um, if you know, it, it's also it's it's good just as for your digestive system. It all kind of depends, but you don't have to use coconut milk. I like personally using the coconut milk with my vegetable stock and also my butternut and then my apple and my sweet potato and just a little bit of the culinary sage, okay? So as I went to go ahead and put one third cup of coconut milk into this beauty, into this beauty. can you guys see all this nice juices? And so it's going to get a little loud in here, which, you know, of course, I have, I have a loud blender that's going on. So what I'm going to do is start off low. And then I'm going to raise it up to high. And you're going to hear it get a little stuck, but after, after it's done then, you're going to hear it start to flow more. Once it starts to flow a little bit more. So what I was going for is that creamy texture, okay? Um, if you can see, I am gonna actually get the spoon here and show you what texture that I'm going for. Oh, this looks so beautiful. You see this little texture right here? So what I'm gonna do, this looks really, really good. Awesome, I love this. So I am going to, Add not a lot, just a little. I'm gonna have, instead of having my stock here, I'm gonna add some of the carrots inside of it. Why? Um, because one, I love the color and I love the taste. So we're gonna add just a little bit of that. Um, and I am going to go ahead. Okay, we did one third, so I'm just gonna add just a little bit more. It all kind of depends if you like coconut milk, which I do personally. And then remember how I toasted the sage. And so I'm going to come back over here to the mixer. It's going to get a little bit loud. All right. So at the same time, I'm going to get one of these bowls. I like this bowl. Let's kind of go for what bows that pops off to you guys. This one or more of this one. Let's do the white one, okay? So let's start off with the white bow. So as I have this beautiful soup, oh my goodness, somebody, this is really, really delicious. I love just the whole flavors of the butternut squash and I love the whole, um, October, the whole October colors um, that's coming in because we're in the seasons that's changing. That means we're going to change as we do with the seasons. We better change <laughs> as we go together. And so um, I have this beautiful <clears throat> butternut squash with the toasted sage. Remember with the apple and a sweet potato and butternut squash, you cannot go wrong. And just one third cup of coconut milk. Um, 
You don't have to use coconut milk. Um, like I said, um, I prefer it. I like it because of the creamy and the texture of it. Um, I always try to get organic if you can. If not, um, just really try to maybe an almond. You can use an almond milk. Actually, um, my daughter, she, lo she loves almond milk. So anything with almond milk, she loves. But I really try to not have her have so much of it. But this coconut milk is all natural, organic, so which is pretty cool. Then you can substitute it as just for a milk. This one right here is really good with fiber. Um, fiber is important to our bodies. Um, um, we have to digest everything that we eat. There's sometimes, if we know, like if it's gluten or things that we eat, we know it's not gonna be digest. Um, that's when how sometimes um, our body will get sick and you can feel the difference. Even if you go on a decolonized diet for a long time and then you put all the bad stuff in there, you know that. But somebody has a question. Sure, what is the question? Hi, Crystal. We have a question and it says, what is your least favorite part, your favorite and least favorite part about being in the kitchen? Well, everybody's least favorite part is cleaning. <laughs> but my actually my favorite part about being in the least is cleaning, but um, I, me, I prefer to clean it myself, <laughs> but um the, my favorite part is, to me, this is um, my art studio. This is um, something that makes me happy. This is my safe haven. This is something I'm making, I'm medicine, for instance. This is medicine. Um, because whatever we put in our bodies, you know, it does affect our emotions. Like I always talk about our mental, what's going on, you know. And sometimes a lot of people don't put those two together. But... Definitely. I love being here in the kitchen. I'm probably, um, I've been in, I've been in a lot of kitchens, but this is my kitchen. So I love it. And I have like things that I've collected over the years, gifts that I got from people. And so I, sometimes I love pulling my special teas out and, um, just those are the things I love. I love being in my own kitchen. How's that? <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> There are a couple, but I'll let you finish up first and then we'll take them at the end. Oh, okay. So as I was saying before, I have this beautiful apple, butternut squash, and a sweet potato, and I toasted the sage. And then what we did, just a little recap, what we did is do a vegetable stock, okay, with your celery, your carrots, and your onions. And I just only did one cup of water. Um, that's because I want my, me personally, I love my soup to be nice and thick and smooth. It all kind of depends on you. If you want it to be a little looser, a little watery, that's fine. But I also put one third cup of coconut milk inside of my soup, okay? So as I put this in the white bowl because I think the white kind of really pops everything off on there. And so what I'm going to do is, of course, I love, <clears throat> I love de um, decorating, I guess, but you don't have to at home, okay? <laughs> but I love adding, definitely, let's go ahead and add some pumpkin seeds. And then, of course, I'm going to have squash blossoms you're like okay where do i get squash blossoms what do i you know with the pumpkin seeds okay and so this soup right here is very creamy not too thick not too thin but i don't know if you can see this and then i'll go ahead and take a picture later for you guys to really look at it but then it also has this flavor of the toasted culinary sage Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Man, I'm good. <laughs> no. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a good way. In a good way. But like this is really good. <laughs> please, please, you guys, just try this at home. And like I said, this is high in fiber, which is pretty awesome. And then I have on the side just squash blossoms and then um your pumpkin seeds. But you also can roast 
your pumpkin seeds too, because anything roasted in here, it just adds so much awesome flavor. So I love for you guys to try the recipe at home, just in case if you guys forgot or anything like that, I'm more than welcome to send um, <clears throat> Native American Cancer Foundation the recipe. Anyways, I want to say thank you for coming into my home and letting me go into yours. And I really hope you guys try this recipe out. So if you had to have a name for it, it is definitely a roast butternut squash soup with a, we'll say a toasted sage and sweet potato. How's that? Anyways, I'm ready for all the questions, you guys. <laughs> thank you, Crystal. That looks so yeah. good. Thank you. Um, here's a question. How would you go about storing it and reheating it for later? Oh, I like questions like that. Definitely um, with this one, because we don't have any kind of meat products or anything like vegetable chicken or beef stock, basically. This one right here is all natural veggie. So this one will be good to store probably in your refrigerator. Um, I would me personally, I'm really finicky about that. So I would definitely leave it in my refrigerator for three to four days. And then after that, I would toss it. That's just me. But also you can always just make a lot. You can um, just like from the butternut squash, like I showed you with the butternut squash and it was only three rings that I've done. So can you imagine from the, this butternut squash, can you imagine I only did three rings from it? Can you imagine with this whole butternut squash? So you'll probably get at least um, um, helping serving of 10 to 12, okay? And so as for that, um, I will definitely, you can freeze. I have these containers. I, I like I like freezing um, because one, just in case if I see a neighbor or if I want to go check on an elder, I always can just give that to them and they can reheat it. But that's what that's what my opinion is. And so um, I really hope you can use that opinion on that and just about the whole butternut squash. Remember, it's all vegetable, so it's all good. I'm not like, you know, the whole food scientist part on it, but I would definitely freeze it and you can freeze it up to at least six months. Me. I only do it for six months. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you, Crystal. Do you um, plant any of these foods? Do you have a garden? Um, well, I live in a condominium. <laughs> so, but I have people plant things for me. So yes. Oh, actually, I wanted to so much um, over at my brother's, he's got some Lakota squash and he's got butternut squash that he's growing. And so normally I would, if I seen him or if I had to go pick it up, I would have had that to offer. But I wanted to do more um, something where it's more accessible for people to get. But yes, I do plant, I do grow. And that's the beauty of squash and how it's grown and then how you can store it because you can use it. I will use mine all the way up until February. Great. There's definitely a demand for this recipe. So I will be contacting you <laughs> later for Thank the you. recipe and then sharing with all of our attendees. Mm -hmm. um, and I have another question here. Is there any particular food you dislike making? Oh, goodness. Um, no, <laughs> I like, I can't think of, um, do I dislike making, um, no, I, I'm going to say no. I love, um, I love, I love making all different kinds of foods, um, except for the one when I was on Food Network's Chopped, I had to make this bodega. So yeah, there is one I like, I don't like, <laughs> and it's, um, actually, it's kind of a dried, um, I'm going to say a sardine and people shave it on their, on their foods, like on their noodles and everything. So yeah, there is one. Take that back. You're refreshing my memory. <laughs> Can you tell us more about your chopped experience? <laughs> oh, well, being on chopped, it was very fun. I'm, I'm not going to lie on that. It all kind of depends what kind of person you are, of course. But um, it was fun. Um, I actually got to create um, the first part of 
the show, um, I invited them here into my community and I wanted them to see the Intertribal Friendship House, for instance. I wanted this, them to see just of the history of our Native Americans, of course, our California Natives and our Ohlone people Natives. I wanted them to see if all the people that were coming all the way around from Native country, where they were at and where they would share recipes and foods and soups and stews and everything. And so I think, honestly, that was the most beautiful part out of all, but then I got a trip, of course, I went to New York. And, you know, um, TV sometimes can be, um, it tells its own story. And so, you, I already knew in my heart that I had a story to say at the end of the day, like I always say, win or lose, I had a story to say. So my story was to let people know there are Native American chefs and we are doing things in our community. So I really wanted to show them the community aspects of it and let them know that we're not forgotten people. Um, they're, they're on our land. So I wanted to just represent that and represent um, of course, the indigenous foods and let people know if I can do it, you can do it too. Thank you. I think we will take one last question. Um, we're kind of approaching our time limit. How okay. has <laughs> your experience with cancer impacted your journey into becoming an, an indigenous foods chef? Oh, wow. And it impacted me a lot. Um, as I was growing up, I had lost an aunt. Um, from cancer and um, she basically raised me. And so um, to see how my family ate and to see how, um, when you see different things that happens with cancer and I also, um, growing up, I wanted to know how could we eat better? How can we, what can we, do to educate herself. Like I always knew I wanted to be a native chef at a very young age, I always speak of that. But at the same time, um, where do our foods come from? And I always have that question. So after my aunt had passed away, it really made me question, but really probably much around four years ago, um, my life was overturned where I lost my sister. Me and my sister are a year apart and I lost her to cancer. And so, but it all took place of how we eat and a lot of it, you know, and sometimes um, food is medicine. And so as you know, that was pretty much um, devastating. And, but it also made me keep on moving about knowing more um, and educating myself and offering more healthy foods within my menu. And that right now, even me doing this is a tribute to my sister. My sister was young like I was <laughs> and she left seven kids behind. And so if that doesn't wake you up as a chef, especially as a native chef, I don't know what will. And so I keep on moving forward and tribute to my sister and tribute to all the women out there that are have cancer, are dealt with cancer. And so I want to contribute. How can I help in my way? Because one, I have my heart and I have my hands and I have this food knowledge. And so that's my way of giving. Thank you so much for your time today, Crystal. It was really fun to watch you. You have such amazing skills. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have any final words for the audience? Yes, I just want to say thank you um, just for your time and for you guys tuning in, wanting to know more about Native foods. I always like to say, go out there and support your Native chefs, or if you see somebody that's um, from a farmer or any produce or anything like that, just support um, our Native foods. And without you, there'll be no us, of course. And then all, you know, and for as for this recipe, I have to take a picture and post it. And you guys are going to have to look because I don't think this lighting does justice. But all at the same time, I want to say, um, make this recipe. I love to have your feedback and I know you guys would enjoy. So I want to say thank you from my home to your home. All right. Thank you. If Thank you and the audience have any more questions, please feel free to contact us at prevention at acap.org or visit our website, AmericanIndianCancer.org. Thank you, everyone.
Bye. Okay, eat healthy, eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Crystal. Uh -huh. Okay, bye-bye. Okay,